Kenny Todd, thank you for coming. Kenny Todd is the ISS uh, Mission Operations Integration Manager, long title. But basically, he's going to be here to share with us some of the um, upcoming things that we can anticipate. Lots of activity going on um, today. The uh, crew has been working on doing some troubleshoot um, work on one of the EMU, the extravehicular mobility units, spacesuits, and also um, gathering tools in preparation for three upcoming spacewalks, the first one beginning on uh, February 20th. What can you tell me about that? Sure. Um, this uh, this series of EVAs is really going to be focused on uh, doing some cable routing outside the space station, uh, getting ourselves in a position to be able to install some additional hardware later this year that will uh, support our ability to, to uh, dock uh, some of our commercial crew vehicles. Okay, so, and, and we have seen a lot of that take place actually um, all throughout this week. They've been working on kind of uh, pre-cable routing before they actually do the cable routing outside the complex. And I know um, that is in, in advance of uh, the addition of the, what we've been calling the IDAs, the International Docking Adapters. Can you tell me? about that and, and what we anticipate for the commercial, what that means for the commercial crew? You bet. Well, as a, as a program, we're, uh, we're very interested in, in helping to uh, spur this commercial industry. And uh, in order to uh, have these vehicles come to station, we need uh, a total of uh, four ports, uh, two for, uh, for uh, visiting vehicles that bring cargo, and then we need two uh, to have our commercial uh, crew vehicles arrive to station. And so we needed to make that happen by having a, a couple of adapters put on. So we're going to do that on the front end of PMA-2, uh, okay. which is PMA on the, front, is the uh, pressurized mating adapter on the front end of station, if you will. And then uh, and then uh, later in the year, we're going to uh, move pressurized mating adapter number three mm -hmm. from its current home on node three over to uh, node two, the Zenith location. And that's where uh, later in the year, we're going to install these, uh, these international uh, docking adapters. And so uh, these EVAs are really about putting ourselves in a position to be able to talk to those adapters, mm -hmm. uh, power them uh, when, uh, when we get there. And there's a significant amount of uh, uh, cabling that we're going to have to do inside the space station as well. So while we do these EVAs uh, in and around these EVAs, we'll also be doing a lot of wiring inside the station. Right. Well, 2015, we've already kicked off and it is a big year for NASA and also a big year for the International Space Station. We are now only a month away from, uh, well, next month we have the launch of the first one year of uh, crew and uh, that mission. Can you tell me some about that? You bet. Um, again, just as we're we're tasked with uh, helping to uh, commercialize low Earth orbit, uh, another thing that, that we have to do is we have to help prepare ourselves to to go for uh, for longer duration flights so that we can go go other places in our solar system and and uh, and part of that is really understanding what it means to live in space for a long time. So uh, so having uh, Scott and Macau uh, uh, fly to the station, live there for a year. Um, uh, allows us an opportunity to watch them. Obviously, uh, having having uh, uh, Scott's brother Mark here on the ground as a as a baseline subject will allow us to really get a better handle on on the, the physiology and how things change in, in space uh, during that period. So it's going to be a, a great opportunity for us to learn about about long duration space flight. Okay, and so and you mentioned so again the crew, the one year crew is uh, NASA astronaut Scott Kelly, and then the uh, his uh, crewmate who will also be doing the one year mission is. Uh, cosmonaut Mikhail Konienko, and you mentioned Scott and Mark, and so Mark is a previous astronaut, So, and Mark and Scott are brothers, but also twin brothers, so that um, science research um, will be very interesting. You know, it's, it's a very unique opportunity, I think, that we have here for us to be able to do that. So. It, it is, and I think, uh, uh, again, uh, um, trying to understand what it takes to, to live outside, uh, you know, our planet and our atmosphere. Uh, this is just an incredible opportunity to do that. And while, while uh, understanding uh, what changes and, and somebody on the ground that has almost the exact DNA and the ability to be able to, to record those changes is really uh, fascinating. And the significance of this launch or this mission is that because we know what goes on bef between months one and month six. We've, we've been doing this for a long time now, which we'll also talk about. But um, six to 12, we don't have that information. And so this is going to be a great way to be able to gather some of that data as well. 
You bet. And just looking at the uh, the different experiments of different uh, uh, fluid physics and, and just the, the things to do to check psychology of the crew, the, all of the different things that we're going to do are, are, are really honing in on what happens in that 6 to 12 month right. period. And, and so, uh, again, it's going to be great data and, and uh, it's, a, it's a good opportunity for, for um, all partners out there who are thinking about uh, long duration space flight in their future. So let's talk about cargo. We have a lot of activity there as well. Right? Currently we have the Dragon cargo craft that is going to be departing from the space station on February 10th next week, Tuesday. And then we also have the automated transfer vehicle that will be departing uh, the very, what, within four days after that on February 14th. So tell me some about the cargo ops that we have going on. Sure. Uh, it, uh, February is going to be a very challenging month for us in general. You've got vehicles coming and going. As you said, SpaceX is going to, we're going to, at this plant, at this point, plan to birth them on the 10th, um, ATV coming, coming uh, off the station on the 14th. Shortly after that, our Russian friends are going to going to launch a, uh, a progress vehicle uh, to the same port where ATV is, it will be vacating on the 14th and, and, then, uh, and then three EVAs right after that. But yeah, a lot of cargo ops right now, a lot of research. Um, once we get through this uh, group of cargo vehicles, uh, we'll see SpaceX again in, in April. Um, and uh, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of human research on that particular flight. And then, uh, then coming later in the summer is when we're going to start to see some of these things that, that really is going to going to look like a little bit of a reassembly of station where you have some new hardware showing up, and we're going to have to be doing some module movements and things like that. So, so that's uh, that's kind of what our future is going to look like over the next six to seven months. It looks busy. <laughs> it's going to be very busy, but it's uh, it's uh, uh, again that's that's part of why we do this job is because uh, you know we're seeking to discover. And, uh, and we're learning as much about how to get commercial, uh, you know, vehicles on station as much as we are, you know, trying to figure out how to get, get out of low Earth orbit with our crews. And so uh, it's a great opportunity for station. There's a lot going on, but, uh, but the team's up to the challenge and, and looking forward to it. Yeah, lots of challenges, and, but lots of great work also, and, and has been going on for quite a while, as I mentioned. So what we also will be, um, be able to uh, partake in is the anniversary of uh, the uh, Expedition 1, the very first mission where human presence was there aboard the International Space Station. Um, there were three crew members, and uh, that was back on November of 2000. So this year we'll have 15 years of consistent human presence. Can you tell me some about that? Sure. I mean, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing when you think about the the amount of time and how fast it's gone uh, when you kind of live in these six month increments like a lot of us do around here but uh, but just thinking back to uh, uh, when uh, Shep and, and Sergey uh, uh, flew that flight you know we we all knew it was something special um, that uh, we weren't sure what the future held um, but uh, just getting them up there in that time frame it was a goal that a lot of us had for a very long time um, through all the design uh, phase part of station and to be at that point where we could we could actually uh, uh, fly a crew to station but but more importantly keep them there and to be able to to do that and see where we've come 15 years later is uh, is uh, it, there's a lot of us are very proud and uh, uh, still at the end of the day we have to continue to be vigilant in the things that we do but uh, but uh, yeah there's it's been a, a great 15 years Wonderful. And it's a great uh, accomplishment, and so you and your teams and everyone here uh, have a lot to be proud of, and they should be. So we're very well, looking forward to this Thank you very much. It's a, the team here between the ops and the engineering community and all the safety folks who help keep us uh, uh, thinking the correct ways. You know, it's an integrated effort, and it's, it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful program. Absolutely.